The client doesn't come to you wanting you to convert them to be architects. They don't want that. They want, they're looking for something else. Business of Architecture UK, episode eight. Hello and welcome Architect Nation. This is the podcast for architects where you'll discover tips, strategies and secrets for running an impactful and profitable design practice. Today we have episode eight and I'm talking with Katie Cropo of Design Effects. And Katie is a architect herself, and she has started Design Effects as a business which helps other architects build intentional companies that follow their business mission and deliver on the impact that they want to make out there in the world. Um, in this episode, it's really fascinating. We talk about a lot of different topics, and you'll learn how by creating a compelling vision, you can deal with burnouts, you can deal with working with the wrong clients and how you can really change the direction of your business so that you are selling to the right people and creating a business that's both fulfilling personally and professionally. Welcome, Katie. Thank you. How are you today? I'm doing well. Excellent. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. And Katie really works with um, architects and uh, and charities in the kind of the social entrepreneurship arena um, and helping them really reach their their impactful audiences and their sort of business targets and goals. So it's an absolute delight to be speaking with you today. Yeah. And I'll to let see. you I'll let you explain what is it what how would you describe your services? How would you describe what it is that you do? Yep. So I work with architects and designers on helping them build intentional businesses and crafting unconventional careers. Yeah. So it's really helping them personalize and make sure that the businesses they're building fit their visions for impact that they want to have. And that's the bulk of my work. I also work with individuals on helping them determine different career pathways that they could uh, go on. Many of them start in architecture, but it's helping them look at what are the possibilities beyond just uh, traditional practice and what that looks like. Yeah. And how did you get into this field yourself? What was your What's your story? How did yeah. Uh, so I am an architect. Uh, yep. I'm trained and licensed in the U.S. Okay. And so I come from that background. And um, but I'm also a very well. I guess similar to probably a lot of architects. Very naturally curious. Always wanting to learn more mm. and um, look at all the different layers and depths to the practice. Uh, so um, I got into more of the business consulting through running my own practice um, for about a year and realizing that there's so much to it that I didn't know mm. <laughs> and that I just wanted to learn more about. And in particular, I was interested in the practices that were doing different types of work, primarily with marginalized communities and underserved right. communities. So I was looking um, at practices like mass design, latent design, uh, DREV even. There's uh, some quite big ones in the U.S. Yeah. Um, and I just I wanted to know more about how their business ran and how why they started it, how they were doing it. Uh, so for about four years, I spent researching, writing, uh, blogging um, on all these different practices and mm. trying to showcase not only their projects, but yeah. also the minds and the, the thoughts behind um, what they were doing. Amazing. Yeah. And then how did that, how did that grow? How did that impact your own practice then? You- yeah. So I, I spent just, I dedicated uh, four years to just researching and writing yeah. and doing that and trying to get more content, more information mm. out there for people. Um, but being a practitioner and having so many friends and now a lot of people that I interviewed, um, I started to build relationships with them. Mm. I really, I realized that they're, they were struggling with things yeah. um, within their businesses. And so I wanted to help them create, make their businesses better, make yes. them work for them. Yeah. And so, and so what were the kind of struggles that you were finding that lots of your contemporaries and people that you knew had? Yeah. Is there, is there like a common set of architectural practice problems that you kind of you deal with that you kind of, you know, people come to you and they're like, oh my God, I'm in this, in this pain. Yeah. Or, I think, you know, to be honest, I don't think it's that different from probably any other business person. Yeah. But I think a lot of it is just getting burned out because you're mm. working too long for too little. Um, you're working with people that maybe aren't the perfect fit for you. 
uh, you're kind of just taking on work because you need it. You feel like if you do more work, everything will work out. So it's just, it's kind of that burying their heads in the sand yeah. and helping them pull back out and see like, okay, you wanted to have this impact. You wanted to do all these things. Yeah. What you're doing right now, we need to assess that before you keep just plowing ahead. So, and I think that's probably common with most business people. Yeah, who, people kind of working in the business as opposed to working on it. Yeah, yeah. And like, well, like we were discussing earlier, the architects, we've got a good way of, you know, stepping, you know, going through the different scales when we're looking at a building project. Mm -hmm. Like we won't get lost in a detail for too long. You can always bring back out and see the context. Yeah. But in business, it can be often, you know, we've got that kind of... Uh, in that work ethic instilled in us like we're, you know whatever we do just work harder and that, yeah. will, that will somehow fix the problem and i think it's that building the building will sell itself yes for you and unfortunately for most of the leaders i work with they realize that's not the case and sometimes the building isn't selling to the people that they actually want to be selling to yeah so it's helping them take more ownership Mm. and put more intention behind where they want to go. Right. And not only for the types of projects that they want to be working on and spending their time on, um, but also how their business fulfills them personally yes. and their own personal goals. Yeah. So it's really, um, it's taking that, that bigger view and that bigger vision uh, behind it before they start moving ahead again and and, ahead. and, and is that quite a, like a resistant process to some architects like how when when do they get in contact yeah so most people well, how, do, how does an architect even know that they they're in that cycle yeah yeah i think it's when they've reached capacity mm -hmm. so they know that they're just working way too long and they don't want to be doing that anymore um, they might have a new client coming to them and they're seeing, oh, this could be a direction for me, but I don't quite know how to do that, where to, how to take that, how to actually build a practice to serve bigger clients, bigger projects. Um, they also come when their revenue is not where it needs to be. Yeah, they know they have a bigger, you know, bigger goals for themselves mm. and a, a bigger vision, but they're just not making it. Like yeah. They're, they're at half, a quarter, maybe even less of what they want to be making. So I help them kind of align all those things so yeah. that it the picture is much clearer and yeah. uh, more focused, but also more energized, like have more like fun with it again and not feel like you have to be doing everything for everyone and sacrificing yourself. Yeah. And so what, what have been some of your most sort of proudest accomplishments mm, recently yeah. or, or, or certain kind of case study projects that you've been like, actually, you know what, I you know, yeah. it was very fulfilling for you and was kind of really impactful for the practice. Yeah. So I um, have just, uh, I guess it was a little bit earlier this year, I just completed my first kind of comprehensive, really big strategic planning mm. process with the charity, an architecture charity that I'm on the board of, Azuko. And it was a nine month project. Um, but by the end we had, so we, we started with kind of the, what were all the experiences before? What, what has Azuko done in the three years that it's been ex in existence? Where does it want to go in the next three to five years? Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, we went all the way down to the three month action plan. So what is that target? What do we need to achieve to start moving us in that direction? Yeah. All these decisions that we've made, what can we actually do? And so we set a goal to fundraise a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, we checked in three months later and they had surpassed it. And so now they're doubling that goal. And to see them so excited, because when we set that goal, it was terror. Yeah. Like them looking yeah. like, okay, we need to raise what? And how are we going to do this? But they knew how to do it. Mm. They just needed that kind of nudge to to do it and to put it as the priority above anything else. So um, so now they're just on target to raise probably more than what we said that we needed to raise in the year. Fantastic. Which is really exciting. And so yeah. when, you're, and when you're working with, with, with architectural practices and yep. they... Do you often find that they perhaps haven't got like those those kind of clear goals set out or they've got those goals, but they've kind of just forgotten about them? Yeah, I think a lot of people that 
um, that I work with, they have the goals and not to say that a vision shouldn't be big and bold and almost kind of too grand, Mm. but I think in some ways it's having it too broad that they actually don't, they can't connect with it. So making the world a better place is a great vision, but like, what does that mean for you? How do you live that out? How do you actually, how does that show up in your, in your practice day to day, month to month, year to year? So making that, more concrete for them. Mm. So if they say to somebody, I want to make the world a better place, and they say, well, how do you do that? They can actually say it, not just say I build buildings, but this is the exact transformation. I give these types of clients in this way. Yes. So. And so is that something that often architects need a little bit of assistance with is, and I know when I talk to architects, it's like, it, it, like you were saying, it's often kind of taking any old work that's kind of coming along or they haven't got the ideal client that they want and it's kind of a little bit of a trapped process where I know that this is not the right kind of client, yeah. but I haven't actually sat down and defined who that client yeah. actually is. Yeah, yeah. so I work with them um, on that. I have a group program that I do and then also a one-to-one consulting program that's right. way more in-depth. And so I always start with what is your body of work? Like, what do you bring to this? Mm. Start to help you prioritize and rank what things do you want to take going forward? What do you want to leave behind? Um, And then looking at your clients, because there's so much in there Mm. that really defines your practice and the choices that you've made in the past. And there's also a lot of good people that you probably worked with that represent and have qualities and attributes and needs and desires that other people are also looking for Mm. in the world. So it's helping you create that ideal client's uh, profile that you can then build your practice around um, in the future. So how do you do that? How do you sit with, how does an architect do that? Do they kind of, is it a sort of evaluation process or? It is, yeah. So I do it primarily through workshops. Right. Um, So we actually, they bring the client list And I have a series of questions and um, just a process that I go through Mm -hmm. to get them to narrow in on those people that they want to they want to target. And then they can go back out um, and start to. uh, Well, I guess so once we identify that, we start to craft a statement about their business. Right. So it's helping them say, this is what we do. This is who we are the peaceful that we want to work with and what they're looking for. And then this is a transformation that we give. Um, And they also get a lot of that information by getting feedback from those past ideal clients, which is scary. (laughs) But that's, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's scary, but it's also, it's so necessary because they have all that information. You don't have to make it up. So what are the kind of things that past clients will often say to an architect and then they'll be like, Oh, okay. That was actually really quite profound to do that. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably a lot of things that are overlooked. Yeah. So it's something like they actually took the pro like they, Um, did all the construction, Uh, Mm -hmm. they managed all the construction. I didn't have to do it. Like that's something that you probably take for granted. Yeah. Oh, well, of course we're going to do that. But for a client to have to say, I don't have to show up at my house and make sure that everything's going well. I don't have to check in on construction. I can do that just for fun, but I don't have to be making calls because I know that somebody else is taking care of it. That's huge. Yeah. And you have to explicitly say that. You can't just assume like, yes. they're not going to make the assumption because they're not in the business. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. I suppose, and, and you kind of, yeah, you forget that's what, that is what, that's part of the service. That's what, that yeah. what is what it, what we do and not communicating to that's what the client gets. They get a kind of hands-free design process. Like yeah. Less stress, basically. Yeah, exactly. It's a less stressful process when yeah. you're, when you're handing it over to, to an yeah. architect. And yeah. so how does that feedback then how does an architect take that kind of um, feedback or criticism in some yeah. in some cases and then turn it into like marketing material or what kind of, what happens to it yep. next? Yeah, so what, um, well, I guess through the program that I ran in September, by the end, what everyone left with was a statement about their work with the, the transformation that they've provided mm-hmm. past clients. And then they had a list of six people, six or three um, past clients that they wanted to reach out to and three prospective clients that they had. And 
a craft, like that statement that they're going to send to them and say, this is the types of people that I'm looking to work with. Mm -hmm. Do you know anyone or would you be interested in talking um, about, you know, a potential new project that you have coming up? So it's almost so. like building in a, a kind of referral system yeah. for the best clients that you've ever had. And yeah. then kind of, and actually kind of once you're aware of what makes a good client, yeah. then there's a kind of a whole set of actions to be taken about how do we attract yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's, it's making that ask mm. and not being shy to say, I want to work with more people just like you because you're great. And I know that we got these results. So let's keep working together. Or can you introduce me to two or three other people who you think might be a fit for me? Yeah. So it's being more proactive about that referral rather yes. than just fingers crossed. Maybe they'll think of me if a friend yeah. mentions that they're working on something. Well, it, 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 it amazes me that when I talk to architects, 90, 80% of their work comes from referrals. Mm-hmm. And yet when I ask the question, oh, great, what's the referral system you have in place? there's always like a silence. Yeah. Oh, well, it just happens. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, what if, what if there was a system in place? What does it look like, you know, mm-hmm. being kind of proactive? So is that the kind of thing you would discuss with architects as well? And they, they get kind of good results from doing that. Yeah, yeah. So I actually, um, my referral system comes from another consultant right. that I follow and there's so much, yeah, it's just a really simple email process, mm. but it's helping them develop that for themselves. Yes. Um, but just like you're saying, yes, referrals are number one for uh, architects. So imagine if you were being more proactive with it, how many more great projects you would have coming in your door. Yeah. And if growth is where you want to take your business, then that's the easiest way to do it right yeah. there. So. Yeah, so it is helping them create that system. Um, I haven't done that full thing with somebody, but I would love to do that because, yeah, it's very simple. (laughs) Yeah. And I think the big piece is just holding people accountable to it. Right. So getting them to actually do it. I see, yes. And that was the big outcome of the program. One of my participants said, oh, I have surveys for my clients, but I actually haven't gone back through and like looked at them Mm. i haven't like seen what people have responded i didn't send it to all my past clients so it's actually like yes you need to do this now to continue on the program but then also showing you how you can use it for future work so it's not just getting feedback for feedback's sake but also like where are you taking that feedback and how are you applying it yeah yeah and is it also feedback for the whole for the whole service process? So that they get feedback on like what didn't work as well as what was working or Um no, there there's not too much of that. There's one question that's on um would you uh would you make any recommendations for improvements or things I could change? Yeah. So but the bulk of it is where were you before? Right. You met me. What did you actually discover through working me was actually the case for yourself? Because a lot of people come with, oh, this is what I need. But as we know, architects can be, you know, they bring the big visions for what's actually needed based yes. on a, a client's needs. And then what was what were the results and the benefits of working with me after? So it gives you that before and after just through the questions. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to make it up. <laughs> They'll, they give you the responses, right? Which is what I love. Brilliant. So, yeah. And and how and how is it for for an architect when they really kind of, uh, you know, they get can reconnected with their vision for practice? Yeah. How does that change what they're doing? I think I see it, especially in the people that were in my program, the people I worked with. There's just like this like lightness and like energy about like yes this is why I'm doing it and I think that's what ha- like when you're too buried in your projects you mm. lose sight of that bigger vision of why you're doing this in the first place and it just brings um, openness to what's coming it me- it brings more like possibility yeah um, looking at things in a different way so I know uh, another program participant um, just had the way that he was describing clients before just felt very like, you know, oh God, just like such a burden. (laughs) (laughs) 
But then after, <laughs> I mean, he got this great feedback and he was like, wow, this is what, yeah. like, this is what they actually think of me. This is what we did. And I feel like it helped rekindle that relationship. Yeah. Especially with people like So there's also enjoyed. like kind of a deep architectural therapy that you're, yeah. that, that you're doing, <laughs> that you're actually working with people to kind of really uh, change the way that they see how their clients are, you know, showing up for them almost. Yeah. Because it can be. I mean, I've, I've, I've spoken with people before who have really like, it becomes like this adversarial relationship mm -hmm. between architect and client and that doesn't serve anybody. No. And then it's, just, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like on the back foot all the time. And then, you know, if, and also architects, uh, working, what going into projects where they're not doing them on their own terms. Yeah. And they've kind of ended up negotiating poorly and mm -hmm. they've agreed to a project because they needed the cash and now the project is not on their terms. Yeah. And, Ultimately, it doesn't serve either party. Yeah. So how do you, is, is that part of part of this process that that, yeah. that can kind of be readdressed and yeah. rebalanced once an architect is kind of clear on who their ideal clients are and yeah. the value that they, they provide? Yeah, that yeah, they can definitely. Start, they can start really negotiating what they're worth. Yeah, yeah. And that comes through um, just looking at, I mean, I think it all starts with time. Mm. <laughs> uh, they have to know how much time they're putting into things so that they can actually uh, estimate um, project fees better right and then looking at the actual way that they package their services for their clients um, and I haven't done this yet but what I'm seeing now is the way that people like the RIBA stage one two three I don't think any client really cares about that they're not going <laughs> to go look at the RIBA and be like are you doing one two three like nobody cares about that <laughs> repackage it so that they know exactly what they get at each of those stages. Call it something different that your client would get excited about. I would mm. I would maybe put that in the footnotes of it. This follows the RIB chartered thing, just in case if you're that type of person that wants to get into those details. Yes. But clients want to see like, what am I getting at each of these stages? So that's what I would love. That's, re that's <laughs> really interesting, actually, because what you're saying about when an architect really um, understands who their client is, like the language will change yeah. drastically. Yeah. And often uh, as architects, I mean, I know that, you know, when I've gone and I've sort of hammered somebody with like, here's the diff all the processes or you throw the big you know, the plan of works at somebody and they're yeah. like, what on earth is all of that? They're like, can you just do it? Well, I don't care. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then you end up sort of, and you're, uh, you can get a bit sort of attached to it. It's like, well, this is what we're going to do. This is what you're going to get. Yeah. yeah. And actually, like, like you say, what, what, what does it look like when, when an when a, when a architect does that or they kind of start learning to speak the language of the client? Well, hopefully it means that they're getting better clients and getting better paid yeah. <laughs> with that. Um, and I think it's it's meeting people halfway at least. Mm. So the client doesn't come to you wanting you to convert them to be architects. They don't want that. They want, they're looking for something else. Mm. So how can you make the process as easy for them to be a part of so that you it is learning. They will learn a lot from working with you, but you don't need to make it onerous on them. Yeah. So how can you make it? Yeah, it's just clearer for them and also more enjoyable. Yes. Like you want your client to enjoy working with you. You don't want them to feel like there you have to be going through the checklist of your work. Like that's your job. That's yeah. why they hire you. Um, and then hopefully it means that you get to talk about other things. Like mm. the more important things about how the project that you're working on, what it's going to do for them or, you know, where they want to be or how does this building enable something bigger for them? Yeah. Like that's the stuff that they want to talk about with you. Yeah. So their life, them, their, their yeah. lifestyle, exactly. Yeah. And how you're kind of facilitating that. Yeah. So that's quite interesting. How do you work with architects? Obviously, like we were discussing earlier about how, in architectural education, we get trained at being very good at f pursuing academic and design architectural mm -hmm. ideas, which often have little bearing to, not not necessarily bearing to reality, but they just they're just in a certain world, mm -hmm. and they're perhaps not of interest to the marketplace or to a client. A client, is, like you say, has got a very different set of agendas mm -hmm. about why they're having a building made. Yep. And yet an architect has has a, a sort of set of individual interests and pursuits and passions. How do those two 
How does mm. how does that get kind of met in the middle? How do you yeah. how does that get balanced? Yeah, that's a really good question. I feel like that's probably another <laughs> conversation, <laughs> a whole another half an hour. Um, I think right now what I'm focused on is the mindset. Yep. And shifting the mindset from being so focused on projects mm. to start to zoom out and look at your business. So starting to understand the components of the business and how you can't just be working solely on projects or solely on marketing or solely on um, researching something or learning something new. Like those things have to work all together. Yeah. And so how can you start to make them work all together for you? Yes. Um, and getting, and I think another piece of it is not uh, attaching your personal, um, I guess, oh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, Needs. Or like, does... Yeah, fulfillment. Right. Not um, putting all your personal fulfillment on your practice. Mm. So not, so starting to see the practice as something different from you. Got it. Um, which is, yeah, it's a, it's a really hard Thing, I think for probably most people. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I'd say I've gone for a similar sort of process of that where when you kind of let go of the practice is not something which is, um, it's not you. Yeah. Actually, it's something that you're building externally yeah. and actually you can step away from it. Yeah. A lot of a lot of freedom uh, and lots of, lots of possibilities come out of that. Yeah. Yeah, I was speaking with another consultant um, who does more financial consulting and also another one who helps with uh, team building within practices. Mm -hmm. And both of them arrived at something similar that I feel like also applies to what I do mm. is that helping architects see their business as a design project. Yes. So that's kind of the mindset that I'm also trying to instill with my work through strategic planning and client relationship building yep. is seeing those pieces as essential to making the practice run, Yeah, but also not making it your only area of fulfillment. Because <laughs> we know that architects are, have so many great qualities that can be applied <laughs> elsewhere in the world. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and because it kind of leads on as well to, you were saying that a lot of the architects that you work with have got a a vision for like a more of a social impact. Yeah. Um, can you say a little bit about that? But yeah. Why you've sort of decided to work with those types of architects or? Yeah. So right now, my uh, more business consulting clients are in two, I guess, kind of threads. Yeah. Uh, one is the social enterprise charity group which is um they have those bigger visions mm. and they know more or less like the the people that they want to work with so they have that more aligned uh and it's helping them bring that down to understand how can they start to create their own funding models for it right okay so helping them break that down for themselves um but then also how do you start to communicate that yeah so you can create the numbers and you can determine who it is that you're working with and why it's different than anywhere else. But it's also knowing what are you going to say to a funder um, or a potential funder or what are you going to say to a client that um, that is in maybe more of the uh, for-profit work as opposed to nonprofit. Right. So how do you differentiate between the two? Yeah. Um, and then I also work with traditional practitioners who want to... They have a practice that's serving, I guess, typical clients, but they also want to bring in more community-based work. Right. So it's helping them develop what is, who are those ideal clients for that for-profit piece of work? How do you get that to be more predictable and consistent and getting the revenues up so that you can then bring in more community-based work? Right. And that could be something that you start on the side as volunteer to start building up those relationships. Yeah. And then once your your main body of work is in a good place, you can start to bring in those projects into your practice. Fantastic. So you're actually kind yeah. of helping them design the business model that will support, yeah. you know, whatever kind of impact and vision that they're they're looking to achieve. Yeah. And you you, you mentioned as well, uh, like architects using their skills in other areas. Mm. Is that something that... <laughs> you know, you're kind of encouraging architects to do? Yeah. Um, maybe kind of indirectly. 
I guess some of it comes through the career mm. uh, planning that I do with people. Yes. So helping them determine what are the opportunities, what are some of the topics, the issues, the locations that they're interested in. Um, what are the things? It's a very similar process to business planning where mm -hmm. it's looking at what are the patterns of the projects and the activities that you've done in the past and yeah. then how can you apply that to where you want to go in the future. But for them, it's looking at what are the, um, I guess, unconventional areas and uh, jobs or businesses or organizations that you could apply your skills yeah. in that way. So it's still a very career and role specific. Yes. Um, but it's helping them look at what that could be beyond just working in a practice. Yes. Yeah. So I, mean, it's, it, I think it's, it's very interesting. And I think our education probably is at the moment needs a bit of a kind of re addressing this mm -hmm. as there's so many different ways to practice architecture. Often, I mean, I know from my experience at university, many of some of the most talented students probably are not best put into an architectural practice yeah and actually they could go and do and many have gone work worked into film and gone into doing all sorts of other yeah. types of activities and actually the the sort of the remit of what an architect is and can do is is totally expanded yeah and with the and with kind of current technology and you know being able to set up businesses online and it becomes much more manageable achievable yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, one of my uh, coaching clients, um, she's done a lot of community engagement work. Right. And now she's looking at how do you bring that into systems design? So what is her place in systems design and service design? And all of her skills that she's built up over 10, probably 15 years of practice mm. are very easily applicable. She was doing community research and engagement for architecture projects. But a lot of that, those same skills can be applied to service design or to systems design. Um, another one of my clients works in a practice, um, but she just loves building. She loves doing the temporary installation. She likes, you know, just being that person that takes ideas and gets them built fast. Yeah. And so she has been looking at different roles, one of which is a workshop lead. So bringing uh community members into the workshop, helping them determine what that idea is and how it could become something built and then building it. It's like, that's an amazing job. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. So, yeah. So it's helping them look at that where you don't have to go to another practice, but what are the other organizations? Who are they? What do they look like? And mm. what, are, what do you want to bring as yeah. well to it? Brilliant. So... Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for speaking with me. And if, if any architects out there are listening to this podcast and they want to work with you, what's the best way for them to get in touch? Yeah, it'd be so my website is Design Effects, um, effects with an A, designeffects.com. Brilliant. So yeah, ch check out all the writing there. Awesome. That's thank awesome. you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye. So that is a wrap. Thank you for listening. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.